Welcome to the C Note Show with myself, Jeff Allen, and Cynthia Cruz. Cynthia's here, of course, for her professional feminine perspective. She and I have over 50,000 hours in this field together. I've been teaching men, leading men, leading families for a long time, and we love being here with you. We love connecting with you, flushing out blind spots. How do I move forward? What am I not thinking of? How can I cultivate the love and connection in my relationship? And how can I feel inspired within myself every single day, every week, every month? And our topic of today is avoid these three top ways you're killing attraction with your wife. These are three top ways you're killing attraction with your wife. Here in the C-Note show, we learn to love and lead with mojo like a king with more intimacy and connection because she wants safety, inspiration, and sexual leadership. You want to avoid big mistakes and solve marriage problems while you're here. You, you are a man that cherishes long-term monogamous relationship, and you want to know how to cultivate that in a healthy way. You believe in polarity, masculine and feminine polarity. Men and women aren't exactly the same. So if you believe that men and women are the, exactly the same, you're in the wrong place. So top three ways you're killing attraction. Let's jump right in. I definitely want to ask you guys and we'll bounce off of you. Number one, not seeing her small efforts. So Cynthia, let's talk about this. What happens when a man doesn't see her small efforts, either in emotional connection, physical connection, small ways, her acts of service? What happens when he doesn't notice these small things, when he's just looking for, uh, you know, sex, like the scoreboard is sex? where the scoreboard is her saying that she loves him. Mm -hmm. But all along the way, if he doesn't notice the small efforts, what happens? Talk with us about that. Yeah, well, I I know if we're talking about the, the small efforts that a woman can make or the small expressions the feminine can have, that's sometimes really hard to pick up on. But what happens when those are not seen, over time, they have a cumulative effect. And she has such the center core of her tied to whether or not you value her feminine or you value what she gives to those small things that when they're not seen, she can really collapse in on herself or create this really big story in her head that, you know, th that you don't care, you don't see her, you don't value her. And then that can put her into a place of almost sometimes wanting to attack back or withdrawing or taking away those things that she's perceived that she's been given. So I feel called, she feels like she's not valued if you don't see these things. I feel called to ask you guys to actually punch into the chat. So in this first question, on a scale of one to 10, how good do you feel you are at noticing small efforts, small efforts from the woman in your life, or maybe she's not in your life right now. Overall, how good do you feel that you are at noticing small efforts from a woman, her acts of service, her glances across the room, what she feels that she's doing to serve you, to help you, or to help the family. Or we're going to talk about this here in a moment, her small efforts in the world. So one to 10, how, how good do you feel you are at noticing her small efforts? Let's jump into the next one. We'll have a conversation about all of these. Number two, you being emotionally reactive. You as a man being emotionally reactive is killing attraction. We talked about this before the show, before the call. So what if he's angry, emotionally reactive? Or what if he's shut down, emotionally reactive, like he's overwhelmed? and just d bails, like avoids, because he like feels like he, as though he's going to collapse within himself. How does that kill attraction if he's emotionally reactive? Talk with us about that. Yeah, that the emotional reactive piece, again, we're all human. <laughs> and, and emotions are good and needed to be have. Unfortunately, when the feminine experiences emotional reaction, uh, either in like an, an outward outburst or a collapse and pull back, she'll either feel very evolutionary psychology reactions to being abandoned uh, or to being attacked. And both of those put her into a real primal state of um, protection, uh, wanting to keep herself safe, meaning emotionally safe. And then she'll go through a whole battery of habits, um, that especially to, to not lead into maybe trusting the situation again and making herself feel more empowered over here. This whole making her, helping her feel safe in your container. The, these are all topics that we teach, by the way, deeply within our one-on-one -on -one and within our groups as well, the kingly life path. So what is it about that she can't trust him 
if it's emotionally reactive. She just wants to feel safe. What is it within her own, let's say, masculinity? If his masculinity is not strong, if he's all over the place or if he's lashing out, why does that, what is it about her that instills her to want to shell off more in that spot? Yeah. I mean, you could inspire your woman's own masculinity to take up her own attack mode. And, but more often what happens is there's something very, you know, limbic brain part of her animal soft side that feels that this emotional world that you're creating together is not something that she can lean into, soften into, open herself or even open her body to. And so she will find ways to avoid that or or, I mean, there really is a, a very big theme in women of if she feels like the emotional safety has been punished or taken away, she will try to punish the space in turn. If she feels like the emotional safety has been taken away or she's being punished, she'll want to punish in turn. Yeah. Naturally. So I love that you guys are putting to the chat. I see fives and fours and a two. Well, I'll circle back to number one there. But this question about emotional reactivity Give me a word or a quick sentence in the chat. What's the most difficult situation for you in which you find yourself emotional, like in an, in an uncalibrated way, anger or blaming her? And we're talking about in your relationship right now. So in your relationship, what do you find is the, one of the most difficult situations for you to remain emotionally centered, grounded, living from your virtue, living from your beliefs and your core values. Type one word or a sentence into the chat. What's the most difficult situation with her in which you find yourself emotionally reactive? Now let's step forward. And number three, top, way, th top three ways you're killing attraction, failing to praise her. Now this one is nuanced. Many men love when we speak about and when Cynthia speaks about her masculine shell. So failing to praise her. We all have masculine, we all have feminine parts of ourselves. Most women have more femininity within them than a man. Most men have more masculinity within them than a woman. There's exceptions, of course. But in an intimate relationship, failing to have polarity kills sexual attraction. And that's what drives a lot of us to find this work is we don't understand why is she not interested anymore? What happened to the sex life between us? What happened to the spark? Right? Where's the adventure? Who? How am I leading? Where's my vision as a man for our intimacy? What does sex mean to me? And when it becomes nasty like this, it's really hard to think about, wow, I, well, I should be praising her. Well, femininity grows through praise, where masculinity grows through challenge. And so if you criticize and challenge your woman, it's going to grow her masculinity. Talk with us about that for a second before we go into specifically praise. Why is it that challenge and therefore criticism, she takes it as often, why does that make her more masculine? Yeah, because she becomes more masculine because she's protecting the the feminine that tends to get crushed more in those situations. So it's a, a response. It's a way to hide that this maybe made her feel weak uh, or it's old stories she grew up with that, you know, you have to rise to the challenge and stuff your femininity away in a, in a box. And the, and the other side of that is we were talking about praising, ironically, praising where a woman does have some of her masculinity out that she's doing good things in the world. Uh, maybe even in her like own way of stoicism is an immediate way to start softening the masculine inside of her to start seeing that her feminine has space to be here and it ultimately can really invite her feminine to emerge more. So let's talk about that more specifically right now. So failing to praise her, and I found this picture of a man, like uh, I'll just make this up. Maybe he made the pancakes with blueberries on top, but let's just say that she made the pancakes with blueberries on top. And let's say he made the cup of coffee and they're sitting at the table here and he looks over and I don't know what she's thinking and I'm not trying to read her mind, but if I'm this man in this moment here, this is a rather intimate moment, right? Sharing food together. Maybe she made part of the meal. I made part of the meal. And if I'm wanting to grow intimacy, if I'm wanting her to trust me and have a connection, a heart connection or a soul connection, I'm going to find something in that moment to praise about her. Now let's talk about this. If she's more shut down and shelled off, she's got a stronger masculine shell, which we deeply talk about and teach of how to bring this down more within Kingly Life Path and our coaching. But if she's got a strong shell, 
she's not going to want to have her femininity praised in that moment. So if this man, she has, let's say she has a strong shell, which look at her body language. Right? Let's say she has a strong shell and, and he says, I love the color of your lipstick today. It's really beautiful. Why is that not a great idea if she has this incredibly strong shell? What are we, what, what are we missing there? Yeah, such, such nuance. It's because her masculine shell is serving a very big purpose for her. She's literally holding on to it, double fisted, you know, fingernails into the palm, her palms, because it's making her feel protected or safe or on top of things or like she can manage everything. And so in that moment to go directly and see the feminine is going to touch her into her own fears and insecurities about softness or not being on top of things or not feeling powerful. So it really is a, an outer door to that to really see where her masculinity is trying to shine its best and, and giving her praise for that because it's she's doing it for a good reason. Uh, she thinks this is the only way. She thinks this is the way she has to show up right now. To shell herself off and have that defensive, more masculine shell. Yes. Because otherwise, yeah. Otherwise, the sort of nightmare of the relationship, her insecurities about her own self. Yeah. Yes. And, and, or like she has to go get a big project done at work. So anything that takes her off of that clinging to the shell is going to make her feel weak or less than or like she's failing because she doesn't have a good relationship right now with her feminine, whether it's in context of with you in relationship or otherwise. And how to help her feel better context of her feminine in the relationship, how to heal her femininity, welcome her into the relationship. We talk about the how to do that deeply in our coaching as well. So I want to say failing to praise her. So let's say this woman is, I don't know, a real estate agent. And I'm this man sitting here realizing that she's very shelled off and, you know, she's not wanting intimacy right now. Maybe they're separated in the same house. I just realized they, they don't have wedding rings on. I didn't notice that when I grabbed this picture, that's kind of perfect. So they're separated in the same house. She's really not interested in having him compliment her lipstick right now. Yeah. So what if he says, Hey, I realize how much you faced at work. She's a real estate agent, right? I realize how much you faced at work. I know it must be difficult to juggle life and the kids and work. And I think you're doing a fantastic job as a, as a woman in your, in the world, right? I think you're doing a fantastic job juggling all the demands that you have. How does, how will that hit a woman? If I'm praising them, her masculinity, the way she's spearing into the world, why is that a great idea to begin with if she's shelled off. Yeah, well, I was looking at Jeff's question. So he said that confused me, praising her masculine behavior and accomplishments to bring out her feminine nature. Uh, when you when you see the the masculine that she's putting out there, and you and you praise that, it's automatically going to give her an emotional felt sense, whether it's feeling proud or recognize that she's being seen because women really do want to be seen for, you know, all they do. It's not their style of masculinity still desperately needs and wants to be seen. And so that gift can put her into more of a feeling state of goodness, I feel proud of myself, I feel seen. And that is kind of that secret keyhole into her more feminine nature that involves emotion, that involves feeling like appreciating herself that really is hinged on uh, being seen for what she is and who she is and what she can. So it's actually like an avenue to water the plant of her femininity through this sort of shell or screen of masculine accomplishment. It's almost like I'm picturing it drip through the shell yeah, to the feminine flower underneath. And that's what it feels like when you gave that example. Like I see so much of what you do. It it feels like a uh, <laughs> dripping through the, the cells of the body. Yeah. So Jeff, come on in and tell us about this, right? Praising your masculine. Have, have you been attempting this? in the background oh it's like shh, I got it. okay <laughs> so let, by the way i saw cuejo come in i saw other men come in tim's here roberto aaron's here too fantastic who has a question about masculine shell and then i'm gonna circle back to all these different spots you guys put into the chat when she criticizes when there's insults when there's judgments but who has a question about masculine shell and praise how do i praise her right now even if she's not 
wanting to spend time with me or doesn't want to have any intimacy with me. Unmute yourself. Come on in. Yeah, I have a question. Is it possible for a woman to have a masculine shell around some people, but be feminine around others? Can they do both at the same time? That's a great question. Yeah, please. It's a great question. <laughs> Yes. And I, I, I saw like you kind of grin too. Like, I think they do. Women are good shapeshifters that way. And they might use different energies as a trying to make a point in some relationships. Um, so absolutely, absolutely. And, and she might, you know, show masculinity to you and then show femininity here over to the kids or the pets, uh, kind of as a, Hey, see what I can be over here. <laughs> Yeah. Dana, we see you laughing and nodding. Does that, does that ring true? Yeah. It's just when Cynthia was talking about it earlier, I just kind of imagined in my head that that really hard masculine shell that I've been the recipient of for a better part of this last year is probably not being um, seen by certain other people. That And I was just wondering if that's possible. You know, are they just walking around with a shield everywhere that they're dragging around? Or is it, are they able to, as Cynthia said, be shapeshifters? So thank you for the answer on that. Now it gives me a little bit more clarity. Yes, yeah, it seems as though, well, I mean, th I think all of us are aware. If you, if you are walking around your neighborhood and you see that one neighbor who really gets in your craw, right? Or they're walking their dog and the dog, every time you walk by them, jumps on you and gets you all muddy. You know, you're going to be, you're going to approach that person, that neighbor in a different way, or that dog in a different way, because you have this like defensive nature, or you realize that the past has hurt you or made you dirty in some way. And what is it like for a woman? Let me ask a question. Off that. What is that like for a woman? She could literally turn and act completely differently toward the cat or the children or the neighbor than you. Hmm. Generally, what's going on for her there? Yeah, I mean, what hit me with that is that how painful that is to witness and to know that women can do that. I think, you know, evolutionarily, women develop to be very into relationship dynamics because that's how they made sure they were one with a community. Uh, that was, that's one of their biggest safety nets. And so they use relationship dynamics in that way with, with different people. And I think the power in that is getting to see it for what it is. And no, oh, this is kind of evolutionary based, or this is coming from a pace of pain, or I can see her doing that, see it for what it is, that this is her feeble attempt to try to feel in control, to feel like she's safe, to feel like she's a part of something or distant from another. And we can see from the outside that maybe that's not the most skilled approach and really maybe isn't serving her in the end. Yeah. Having empathy, having compassion. Again, how to do that is a, a difficult question, a more difficult, more nuanced question. But yeah, I saw Joshua put into the chat that you want to say something. You guys can always raise your hand if you go to reactions and then raise your hand in Zoom or punch into the chat, hopefully that I'd notice. But yeah, Joshua, come on in, unmute yourself. What's your question? So you were talking about, well, could you bring up that screen with the questions? Sure. <laughs> So number one, not seeing her small efforts. Number two, being emotionally reactive. And number three, failing to praise her, either her masculine shell or her femininity. <clears throat> well, you were talking about like a masculine shell or whatever. But sometimes I, I like, I point out to her that she's the way she's acting, but then she would like reverse it on me. Like I'm the bad guy. And then she'll like criticize me when I'm just trying to point out something to her. So she'll just reverse it to make it so that there's nothing wrong with her, but there's something wrong with you now. Yeah. So at the beginning of our call, we, Josh, we talked about how a woman will take criticism as they the don't challenge. Take it. Right. They don't take it well. Th that's right. <laughs> they, don't they don't take it well. That's um, that's the understatement of the moment. But yeah. it's like, why don't you just take what I say and try to better yourself to improve the relationship or yourself, like to self development? But as a man, you're supposed to just take it to the chin and be like, "Yep, I messed up. Let's fix it." But instead, she's just like, "Oh, I don't want there's nothing wrong with me here." Right. So men and women are different. Do you believe that men and women are different, Josh? Yeah, one hundred percent. Okay. So just, so man to man, one thing that was a part of me growing up and maturing as a man was realizing that the way I think and my value set is not the same as the way other people think. And it's not the way they should have values in the world. And so what you just described is 
why doesn't she just act more like a man, right? I tell her what's going to help. I, I tell, I give her feedback. Why doesn't she just take it like a man, Cynthia? Just take it like a man. Come on, get, get better. <laughs> I'm afraid to even, like I had hesitated even saying that. So come on, like just step up. Yeah, it makes perfect sense, Josh, what you're saying. If I was to feel into my emotional body at the moment, the feminine energy in me totally collapses around that kind of step up, rise up, take accountability, do this for your own self-development. That doesn't mean that her own masculine energy can't do some of that, but it's very crushing uh, to the feminine to be asked to meet that kind of energy. She transforms in very different ways. And a lot of that way comes from when she feels seen and heard and understood. There's a natural inclination, an instinct in her to want to be better, be more, to rise up to that that kind of receiving from partnership or another person. Yeah, thank you. So Josh, what did you want to add on to that? Please go ahead and unmute yourself. Yeah, go for it. Um, well, I feel like if she were to receive criticism from her boss at work, she definitely would make those changes. But her husband says something out of love and loving and kindness to try to make everything work and she don't she don't do it. So yeah, that, that's right. That's right. So her intimate relationship so, does she not respect me or does she respect her boss more? Like so so hold on. So her intimate relationship with you is different than any other relationship that she has. So her relationship with her boss is one more of tasking and goal oriented. It's more of a masculine type of relationship, right? She's going out into the world. She has to task, do these check boxes. She's trying to make money. So that's the that's the reason she's out working. That's the relationship with the boss. But with you, it's a polarized, if you want to have intimacy, there needs to be polarization, her and her femininity. And so it's a completely different situation. Do you want to add anything else there? And then I want to move over to his side. Yeah, only just to say the confusion and the angst and the, your question about does she even respect me feels so real and honest and of your truth. And then if I step back into a woman's perspective, I can see about her interacting with you differently in romantic relationship as it not being about respect or not respect. It's much more emotionally based and, and nuanced in this, this kind of polarized intimacy. Yeah. And Josh, I know that you're new to KLP as well. Josh just joined us. So we'll be learning a lot more about this within the trainings, within the group calls. Yeah. Hassan, did you want to come in, please? Yes, actually, the, some of the, the things that, uh, that Josh was asking, actually, was on top of my head too. And a and couple of things that uh, that sometimes I'm getting confused is whether the, the female or the women, they know they are living with the masculine energy. Or it's just a shell that that they know they, they they have the shield now and they can put it off. That's that's one part. The other part here is uh, is the way that to interact. So so one example was that like the, the girl was describing okay how amazing she could handle or she would have thought if this situation happened in terms of like uh, managing some as mainly related to the world. And the feeling that I was getting, even I could not think of praising her for, for how cool or how good she's doing. The only thing that was coming to my mind was that if, if you're facing such issues, I am the man here, so you could just refer to me and it could like getting back to me. Like, uh, and uh, you didn't need to go through all the pain or everything. And at the end, she came back to me. Like she, she, she responded to me that uh, the only thing that she expected was that for me to say, oh, good that you could really like thought of everything and you have really managed all the situations but the still the still I wouldn't get that and and when, when you say like start praising her masculinity or the, the the energy that she's living with that I find it kind of like opposing to myself too like I yeah that's that's the way that I feel it anyway. but probably there is a learning curve here for me yeah that's that's a great point so let me start with the last thing that you said um you know Josh was also inferring, and I'll say this with love, right? Josh is inferring, I don't really know how to talk with my woman to increase attraction. Like I'm using the best that I can of what I think that I would want to hear. But through this work, through these calls, through the coaching and the training, you're learning, well, what's actually going to increase polarity? What's going to naturally attract her? So to think, well, it's unusual for me to praise I don't want you to, we're not saying praise her, you know, beard and, and like how big her muscles are. 
right? It's more of her, to, which if you want to do that, that's cool. I know, I, but you want to pray. I was thinking of a beard in another location, but I'll, I'll say that for next time. So, but if you, if you want to, if you praise how she's effectual in the world, the way she's accomplished in the world, she's a human, right? She, unless she just loves being a hula dancer all day long, you know, unless she's a tantrika sexual priest goddess, we talked about this every waking moment of the day and she just lives on the vibe of the universe that woman you may not need to praise her feminine because there is no feminine shell in that made up woman that i just described but most women 99.9 percent .9 of women are going to want to feel that you respect the how they are in the world too right you've heard a woman say i don't feel respected i don't, I don't feel like i'm included you just make decisions for me that's her wanting to feel more masculine accomplishment or masculine respect in a woman's way, not in a man's way, but in her way. Can you say a little bit more about that? Yeah, I love, I love the, she wants to feel that in a, in a woman's way. And I know that then leads to the question, well, what does that mean? What, what could that be like? I think that desire to show that she can do something, I can show that I can handle everything, show I'm on top of thing, things, things, is very powerful in her. And what makes it different is it's it's not almost like an internal scoreboard or points or a hierarchy she's trying to get from that. It's really comes back to a more bigger yearning to be seen in her prowess, in her inspiration, in in the way she's moving, even if it's outward. Uh, yeah, that's really well said. It, it's still her wanting to feel like a woman. It's just the praise is more of her masculine tasking in the world. Yeah, Aaron, thanks for raising your hand. Come on in, please. So I have an example of something that happened to me, and I want to understand if this is something related to masculine and feminine relationship or communication. When we were separated, we were back together. When we were separated during the four months that we were separated, we were in different countries, and we communicated always through the, through the, through the chat, right? Mainly through the chat. And... We were going through counseling and what happened in counseling is because we were at different locations. It was all through this means, right? It was all video. And when we were in the video conference with the therapist, it was always, she was very, very direct, very straightforward. There's no connection. The relationship is over, whatever, right? It was very pointy, very, very and and that was a person that I never knew before, right? And it was like to me, this who's this person that's that's here in front of me? Mm -hmm. And and at the end, when the call ended, I don't know, an hour later, we communicated through chat, and it was back to her way of being with me, right? Asking me favors or need, things that needed the kids to be done or whatever it needed to happen on a day to day house type of top scenario. But it was always very confusing to me how strong and direct she was in the in the therapy sessions and in video versus when she was communicating through the chat. Right? It was like two opposites, and I went to me. She's going crazy. What's happening? I couldn't. I couldn't believe it. I, I was too much for me because I'd never seen that person. Right? And when we went came when I was able to come back to Mexico. Right? And and we started like having confront real person-to-person -person conversations and like therapy with the three of us in, in person, the, the, the dynamic just totally changed. And um, she became her old self, right? Um, and to me, it's still puzzling how that happened. And, and now that you're talking about feminine and masculine, feminine, I mean, energy within herself, I think that's, is that an example? Is that something? Yeah, that's a good question. What's, what's your initial thoughts? Yeah, that's a that's an incredible example, and I, I'm I'm sorry for how off putting and incredibly different that came across in her, and that does sound like with the with the therapy she was in a very masculine place, and there was almost a, she was able to do that more because there was a, a removal of connection with you because there's, there's a third person there, whereas when it it was just interacting over the chat or in person. Your energy's there. She's interacting with you. There's polarity there. Uh, it, it does feel like she can play both ends of those poles. Um, and I, my question then is wondering, you know, when she's in those different energies, how that makes her feel. Did she feel like she got to be really heard 
in therapy when she expressed herself that way? Or when she's with you in person and, and more polarized, does she get to feel more connected? Does she get to feel but heard by you? Yeah, Aaron, I, I muted you. There was a little bit of feedback for the audio. So go ahead and unmute yourself. But did you ask her about her experience of the therapy? No, I never did. I haven't asked never that question. I don't, I, I, I just have the the impression. I, it's still puzzling to me, right? Why why the, the dynamic happened the way it happened? According to the therapist, just with me, the therapist and me, it was like um, barking to a to a or or yeah, barking to a dog on the other on the other side of the fence, right? Where it was <laughs> it was easy for her to feel protected and to sure okay that type of scenario. And, and yeah. but to me now that you're talking about feminine and masculine, I think it sounds a little bit like that. Yeah, that that makes sense, Aaron. And um, let me say something. You know, we're asked all the time and. Again, just for audio, I'm going to press mute on you, Aaron. We're asked all the time, uh, should we go to couples counseling? How do I approach couples counseling? Couples counseling is good for the woman to feel safe to open up and speak more than she would otherwise. So if she's really closed down and she won't open up with you, count, couples counseling is she can feel safe to say something that she normally wouldn't say to open up. And your role, the best use of your role is to ask her deep questions, to be as relaxed as you can. Don't try to fix anything in couples counseling. It's not your, it's, it's not the same. It's not fair. So it's then not, don't take your turn to say how you feel and emote yourself in couples counseling, because that's not going to help you be seen as a leader. It's not going to help her think you care about her. It just likes your, looks like you're waiting for your turn to talk. So she should be doing 80% of the counseling or the talking. You're asking her about her emotions for her to emote. Otherwise, we, we talk about this. I'm hesitant to even say this because this is a whole other topic we could talk about another time. There's levels of relationship. So level one of relationship is like caveman. Caveman, cavewoman, 1950s, let's say. It's, pol it's polarized. Our roles are very masculine and feminine, but it's quite surface level and there's really no deep connection. Often there's a lack of trust. It's sort of, we're just going to be surface level caveman, cave woman together. Level two is roommates, which kills polarity. We just communicate better. We deal with the kids. We take care of responsibilities, but sex dies. And then there's level three of deep intimacy that we teach and we guide how to get to and how to heal her toward and invite her toward, which is communication and polarity and deep blooming in sex and love where you tr there's trust and for future vision together. So often therapy is just roommate style communication. And we remember caveman, cave woman, like, why can't we just go back to when we first met, you know, instinctual honeymoon phase, that's kind of caveman, cave woman. But what we teach is how to go forward into deep intimacy, the level three, that's what we teach. So I'm going to go back into the chat. That's a great question, Aaron. Thank you. I'm going to go back into the chat. If you're curious about this, or if you want to get our free 45 minute audiobook, if you haven't seen that great men move mountains.com slash free audiobook. Or if you have questions, you can reach out to me. You can email me. You can DM me through Facebook as well. I'd love to see you there. So I want to circle back to the first, the first mistake. And I want to call on, on Chris because he gave himself a two out of 10 with not seeing her small efforts. Chris, come on in. Why do you feel, why'd you give yourself a two, not see her small efforts as well? I guess I don't really know what small efforts are when present to them. So yeah. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't know what to look for. Sure. What would you guess? And then I'll ask Cynthia. Uh, I have no idea. So you told me like smiles and like, uh, yeah, I really have no idea. Sure. Okay. I wouldn't know what to look for. So I wouldn't know what to, uh, yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to be a brutal with you. First. I'm, honestly, I've never heard of these, uh, to be honest. And I've been, you know, obviously been learning a long time. I never, these small gestures. So yeah. Yeah. Very cool. I'm, I'm going to be, we know Chris, I love you, Chris. Yeah. Let me be brutal for a second. How yeah. does it feel to have a man say, I don't even know what small efforts look like. Uh, well, it make it makes total complete sense. Um, She's being nice. I'm, <laughs> I'm waiting for the not nice part. Yeah. No, no. I mean, I get it. Yeah, be real. So I feel like like my feminine already start to like want to disappear because I'm like, oh, I like I don't even know how if you'll if you'll read what I'm trying to give or if it will be good enough or um, 
it won't look like I'm trying hard enough to give a good answer. It, it kind of, I kind of want to ghost away because I'm uh, afraid of like what will be seen or won't be seen. Um, and that's a parallel to life of what he's asking. I'm hearing. Yeah. And, yeah. and I think it's a really, really good question because we, we might ask women the same thing to, you know, see through new eyes, how men, how you give with your presence, with wanting to be providers, with wanting to protect and and women too like need to shift their goggles and see because it, it is very different ways of communicating and expressing the very important to uh, how she shows up or you know how I witness masculinity wanting to show up have purpose and make waves with people. sure so give us a few specific examples as a professional in this field for long time what translating to a man what does a woman want to be seen that she's maybe not even aware of that are small effort yeah there's so we could talk about the category of just how she moves around you does she you know walk by in close proximity is there the slightest of touch you know within in your presence does she open her body language just a little bit uh open her facial expression there's also the category of her and what what she's wanting to give in terms of the environment does she like to set up the environment so that it's pleasing so that everyone can appreciate that does she want to make the cup of coffee or tea uh i also like to think of it as you know if you were looking through the eyes of the how she's doing things in the environment or acting or even just the tenor of her voice even if it's higher pitched than yours, is there the slightest bit of, oh, that's inspiring or that's exciting. That, even if she's not doing that on purpose, to be seen for that is very, can be very healing to just the very natural, instinctual, biological part of her that's in. Yeah, part of us. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Chris. That's a great question. And I'll, I'll wrap up with this. Yeah. Part of us as a man really wants to understand when she, when a woman says, I don't feel you, we don't feel connected. I don't feel a spark between us. And as a man, it, the key for that is to get out of your brain and to get into the present moment, get into your body, get into your guts, get into your balls, get into your legs. And that may sound totally foreign to you. So we talk about this deeply within our coaching, but to get out of your thoughts, your thoughts are often concerned about the past, like feel guilty about the past, or they have fear about the future. Your mind is there to try to keep you alive, right? Kill, fuck, eat, survive, spend the least amount of calories. That's your mind's goal. But your heart and your spirit and your presence are there to bloom in the present. So our body is in, the, you know this very well, Chris, our body is in the present, our heart, our emotions are what we're feeling right now are in the present. And so to come back to the present moment and appreciate the small things that she's doing, that's the precursor for her connection. So if you're curious about this, you want to know more about this, reach out to us. Love seeing you guys here. Uh, ask questions in our Facebook group, greatmenmovemountains.com slash Facebook is the way to get invited in. Ask questions we can talk about here. Love you guys being here. We'll see you next week, same time.